Afternoon, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going through what the f is chromatic aberration and how you can avoid it in your photography. Let's go. Before we get into this, if you find this video in any way helpful, informative, funny, whatever, please, please, please drop a like down below. It helps me with the algorithm more than you realize. Also, if you're new here or you keep finding yourself coming back to my videos, consider subscribing, join the community and yeah, help me out. So to be completely honest, until about a year ago, I actually had no idea what specifically chromatic aberration was, what was causing it or anything like that. I just knew that it happens sometimes and I can go in Lightroom, I can go down to the correct tab and hit remove chromatic aberration. Problem pretty much solved. Until one day I was kind of like, what, what is this? And then I had a Google and then I had got Quite down the rabbit hole, realized what chromatic, chromatic aberration was. It's, okay, so straight off the back, I'm going to start calling it CA from now on because trying to say chromatic aberration a lot of times is painful. So I wanted to make a video about what exactly it was because all I knew it was was the green and purple lines that sometimes appear around the edge of your subjects and that I can remove it in Lightroom. So we're going to go in depth what it is. I will warn you, this is going to be quite an info heavy start to the video and I'm going to try and explain it as simply as I can. If you don't want to know all the details about specifically what chromatic aberration is, I will be dropping timestamps down in the description, so you can just click them, skip to the part of the video where we talk about how you can remove it and how you can prevent it. But if you want to know exactly what it is, if you're like me, because I like to just know, I like to know the ins and outs, so we're going to go through that first. So before we talk about how you can avoid chromatic aberration in your photography, it helps to understand what it exactly it is, instead of just like the green and purple lines that appear around your images. Put really simply, however, it is literally green and purple fringes, or the lines that come around it, around the sharp edges of your subject. So I'm putting an example up on the screen now. On the left side of this image, you can really see quite over dramatic chromatic aberration. For the purpose of the video, it really shows you what it is. And on the right side of the image is an image without chromatic aberration. So this is kind of the difference. This is That's what we're talking about. And I don't know, you might not have even ever noticed it in photography and you might now start noticing it now, but that is something that can occur within your images. So CA is caused when the colours are incorrectly refracted, bent, as they come through your lens and when they hit the sensor, they meet at the wrong points. They're combining at the wrong points and that's what causes chromatic aberration within your images. If we think of this image that was made famous by Pink Floyd, as you can see here, the light is coming in one side and it's coming out in all the different colours out the other side of the prism. That's literally what your lens is doing. As the light comes in, it's splitting all the colours into individual wavelengths. And as they come through the lens, they should then be meeting up at the other end to enter your sensor. When they meet up, they should be meeting at the correct points to create the colours within your image. And CA is caused when some of these wavelengths don't meet at the correct point, so you get the incorrect colours around the subject. So your focal plane is your sensor's point of focus. This is where all the wavelengths should be meeting up and combining to create your image. There's a few factors that can cause a mismatch of where these colours land within the focal plane, and that's what causes the mismatch within the colours and therefore causes chromatic aberration. These factors include focal length, aperture, and build quality. Because of that last factor of build quality, it's a safe assumption to assume that you won't really get chromatic aberration in more expensive lenses or that it's not as common or as easy to occur in more expensive lenses. Are you okay, dog? Like, I'm just trying to film it and you're just huffing and puffing. But that doesn't mean it will never occur in high-end lenses because there are some other external factors that are causes chromatic aberration, not just focal length, aperture and build quality. So to summarise, if some colour wavelengths do not combine as they should when they reach your focal plane in your sensor, this will cause colour fringing around the edge of your subject, chromatic aberration. You can dive a hell of a lot deeper into this and exactly why and all the science behind it, but for the sake of this not being an hour long video, we're just going to stop it there. That's all you really need to know to understand what it is, so we can now go into depth on how you can avoid it. Can we just talk, can we just take a minute to talk about this, this promise? Just, oh. Bloomy highlights. Yes. Okay, so now we know what it is. How can we remove chromatic aberration from our images? As I said at the beginning, it's really easy to remove it in post using Lightroom or Photoshop. I don't actually know the process to do it in Photoshop because I, I use Lightroom, so I know how to do it in Lightroom. 
but it's really easy to remove in post. But the key thing, if you're gonna be removing it in post, you really want to be shooting in RAW because of the amount of data in RAW files, it makes it a hell of a lot easier for the editing software to remove it. If you're shooting JPEG, might not do as good of a job. And to be completely honest, you wanna minimize or remove it as much as you can in camera first so that you haven't got to do this extra step in post anyway. And if it's really intense post processing corrections, sometimes aren't completely the best. They're not, they don't look natural because they're not natural. So it's always best to try and remove it in camera if possible. But as I say, shooting raw to give your editing software the most chance at removing CA from the images. Here are a couple ways that you can help remove chromatic aberration. Ah, oh, it's a mouthful from your images. First one is get to know your focal lengths. As I said earlier, focal length can be a factor in causing chromatic aberration. And as handy as zoom lenses are for being able to zoom in from quite a wide focal length to quite a cropped focal length, they are quite notorious at experienced chromatic aberration and more notorious at experiencing it than prime lenses. Because of this, it's a really good idea to have a play around with your zoom lenses and just kind of test all the different focal lengths that you've got available to you. And really pixel peep, figure out when chromatic aberration is occurring within your images. So the best thing to do is take these test images within a really high contrast scene. One sec, the dog wants to leave the room. So the best thing to do is take some test images at all the different focal lengths in a really high contrast scene and then pixel peep, figure out when CA is occurring within your images, what focal length is happening at and how contrasted your scene is. This will give you a really good understanding of the equipment you're using and how far you can stretch it and push it before you start to occur any issues within your image. It also kind of gives you an idea of how well your files can be processed by Lightroom or Photoshop to then remove this in post if you can't avoid it in camera. Zoom lenses are really susceptible to CA at their widest focal length. So if you're using a 70 to 300 millimeter, it's gonna be more susceptible to chromatic aberration. There's so many big English words, Jesus, at 70 millimeter than it would be at 300 millimeter. So specifically pay attention to your wider focal lengths. And if you do notice that at your widest, you're getting a lot of chromatic aberration, and that's really annoying because you wanna shoot the widest, what you can always do is use my lazy photographer's hack. I'll link that video up here, but basically take multiple images at a more compressed focal length, so 100 millimeter instead of 70 millimeter, take multiple images and then stitch them together as a panoramic afterwards in Lightroom or on Photoshop. Okay, so you may have noticed in that last point that I specifically said to test these lenses in a high contrast scene. There is a reason for that. This is because chromatic aberration tends to occur in scenes that have a lot more contrast. The worst ones for this are landscapes with particularly bright suns, when the light source is behind your subject and against completely white backgrounds that have a lot of light reflecting off them. These are three examples of really high contrast scenes where chromatic aberration can be really prominent. So if you want to avoid chromatic aberration within these scenes, it's probably best to reframe your image. If you're taking a shot, you're looking at it in, in camera and you're like, ah, okay, we're getting a lot of color fringing around the edges here. Reframe your shot, reposition, and try and balance out the lighting a bit more so it's not as contrasted. And this will really help you to minimize the chromatic aberration appearing in your images. If possible, it may even be helpful to introduce some more lighting, be that natural lighting or artificial lighting, just to balance out the contrast within the image. So to avoid high, high contrast scenes, reframe your images, try and introduce more lighting if possible. Okay, so similarly to point one, get to know your lens's aperture. A general rule of thumb that the lowest aperture, so the highest number, f22, f20, will incur less chromatic aberration than your highest aperture or widest, so f1.4, f1.8, f2, f2.8, etc. As mentioned earlier, this is more notable in the cheaper lenses. It's possible obviously if like if it's a high contrast scene you're still possibly going to get it in more expensive lenses but generally speaking it's more prominent in cheaper lenses and it's another good practice to have to test all your lenses and really get to know the equipment you're using get to know how your image looks at different apertures whether or not you're incurring chromatic aberration everything like that and just really get to know your equipment so that you can really use it to the best of your ability again if you're doing this testing do it in a high contrast scene and really see how far you can push it see how contrasted you can get your scene to be. And also if you're using doing this on a zoom lens, it's really good to spend some time testing both the focal lengths and the focal lengths with the apertures. Really get to know your equipment. So shooting at 70 millimeter at 2.8, does that give you a hell of a lot of chromatic aberration? If so, 
if you shoot at f4 does it minimize it if you shoot at 100 millimeter but 2.8 does that minimize it really get to know your equipment and get to know how you can use it to the best of your ability and get the most out of your kit all of this will help you so much when you're out in the field and doing shoots to help you remove chromatic aberration in the camera and avoid having to do it in post and my fourth tip for removing chromatic aberration within camera is to keep your subjects centered. Genuinely speaking, chromatic aberration occurs more prominently at the edges of your frame. If you've ever watched a lens review when they really pixel peep in the images, they always go to the corners of the frame to look for imperfections such as chromatic aberration. And that is because it's more prominent in these areas. So to avoid it as much as possible, especially in portraits or if your subject is particularly close to you or in a high contrast scene or anything like that, it's a really good idea to keep your subject closer to the frame. And also there's another test you can do with your image is in a high contrast scene again, because that's when it's gonna occur the most, test where in your image and where in your framing that you're occurring the most chromatic aberration. And so you can avoid those areas specifically. So to summarize, chromatic aberration is occurring in your image when the wavelengths from the colors coming into your lens are meeting up in a mismatch at the sensor. To avoid this, we can avoid high contrast scenes, figure out what focal lengths our lenses are most susceptible to chromatic aberration, figure out what aperture our lenses are most susceptible to chromatic aberration, and figure out about whereabouts in your framing that chromatic aberration is occurring the most. I don't think I've said chromatic aberration this many times ever in my life. So this might not even be a problem that you're experiencing. Personally, I don't actually experience it that often with my Sony camera, but I did with my Nikon. And even when I had the Nikon, I didn't really understand all these factors back then. All I knew was that I could remove it in post afterwards. But the best way to figure this out is to really get to know and understand your equipment. See how far you can push it, both camera sensors, lenses, everything. See how far you can push it, see how much you can get out of it and really get to know and understand the equipment you're using. Work out what works for you and works for your camera and really understand the tools you're using for the job. So that's it. If you've got any other tips or tricks to remove and reduce chromatic aberration with your images, drop a comment down below. I'd be really interested to know as well and also share it with the community. Let everyone know. Let's have a conversation about it down below. If you did find this video helpful, please, please, please drop a thumbs up. It massively helps me out. I can't express that enough. And it will push this video out to other people that are searching for this thing or budding photographers. I really want this to be helpful to new photographers specifically, just because it's overwhelming. Like it generally is. Photography can actually be really overwhelming when you really realize how much to it there is and how much there is to know. So I really want this to be helpful to those that are getting started. And maybe if they feel overwhelmed, we're overwhelmed. I hope they find this helpful. Consider subscribing if you aren't already. Join the community all the other stuff that YouTube is there to do. I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to take the shots. I felt like there was like an extra thing to say there, but it was take the shot, peace. But I just kind of, I just froze, you know? It's right, peace. Peace, peace, peace. Just go, just, just go, just go. See you later, bye. Why are you still here? Go, go. So if you're still here, drop. Is there a pumpkin emoji? Does it, why a pumpkin? Why did I think of a pumpkin? Drop a drop a birthday present emoji in the captions because it's my birthday this month. If you're still here, if you're still watching this, drop it in the captions, in the comments. Jesus, just just end the video. Bye. See you later.